Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk. Today, we are going to be discussing Black Widows. Now, I know there's a lot of videos out there right now talking about the dragon set of Black Widows, which we are going to talk about, but we're also going to talk about the Black Widows as a whole and kind of just kind of how we've talked about polychromos and, and other pencil sets before, how we're just going to go into a tiny bit of the history about them, and then we're going to discuss the pencils themselves. We're going to go over... Um, their water solubleness because I've recently discovered that they are water soluble. So we're going to test um, a pencil from each set. We're going to do that. I'm going to show you uh, how I like to shade with these pencils. Uh, and we're just in general going to kind of take a look at them. So let's get started. So Black Widows were created by a gentleman named Albert who saw the health benefits that can come from adult coloring. He met with a craftsman who manufactured pencils and from there went on to create the Black Widow pencils. The first set he created was the the Black Widow set. I have this one right here. Um, it has, well, had, has, it does have 24 pencils with a good variety of colors. Um, the fun thing about this is that the audience from his Facebook page actually helped name each one of the pencils. As far as the pencils themselves, uh, whether he chose wax or oil, uh, he just chose wax because out of the two, he was like, okay, let's do wax. He wanted the pencil to be comfortable. So through research, he discovered that a hexagonal barrel was a great choice ergonomically. From there, he went on to create the subsequent pencil sets such as Scorpion, Cobra, Light Skin Tone, Dark Skin Tone, the Monarch set, and the most recently released Dragon set. All of these sets add up to 180 pencils. However, you can purchase them individually. So you can see here, we've got the Black Widow, the Cobra, the Scorpion. I'm not sure which order they came out in, um, but I do know that the first three sets were the Black Widow, Cobra, and Scorpion. Um, he added the dark tones and light tones at a certain point. Um, I'm not sure which point in the timeline that was, but I do know that after these five, then came the Monarch set, and then obviously we all know that the Dragon set, which is the most recent. Um, as far as if you don't own any Black Widows yet, and you are curious about trying them out, I would most likely recommend... So the Monarch set is great because it has a lot of colors, but as you can see, it's sort of lacking in reds, which obviously is more than makes up for with the other sets. Um, I would say the Scorpion set because it's got, you know, a decent range here, but it has no black. So if you're like, if you're going, I want to try just one set, what's one set that can give me kind of the best bang for my buck here? And I would say probably the Black Widow set. And that's mostly because it has a little bit of something from every every you know color on the color wheel, including a black and a gray, uh, plus a white. So I would say that if you're only going to purchase one to start with, I would go with the Black Widow set. Aside from that, this, both of the skin tone sets are really good. You have your dark tones and your light tones. Um, it's just basically, it's just, it's simplified into groups here. So you don't necessarily need to be, need to buy all 180. Um, I will say, between the Black Widow, the Cobra, and the Scorpion, the Dark Tones, and the Light Tones, those five set aside, I do feel like, although he said that the formula hasn't changed, the feel of the pencils are different to me. Uh, Monarch and Dragon, which it's not bad. It's not bad. I'm just saying there is a difference between the five and these other two. For some reason, they just feel smoother and softer. So I'm not entirely sure kind of what happened there. But I will say, like, if you look at the chart as a whole, with all 180 pencils. He's done a pretty good job of filling in the gaps where it needs to. Now, I will say that I do feel like there's some duplicates. That being said, when there's 180 pencils, it's kind of hard not to have some that are really close to others. And for some of them, like for instance, Sundown and Dragon Breath, they are incredibly similar, but you can see just a slight difference. Like Dragon Breath maybe has just a tiny bit more red in it, while Sundown is slightly more orangey. Um, Deep Red and Blood Red, I would say Blood Red maybe is a bit more vibrant than Deep Red, but it's it's subtle. It's, it's very, very subtle. I'm trying to think. Okay, Grape and Eggplant, those are really similar. Maybe Grape is just a tad a tad darker. I would be curious to know when it comes to when he decides what the new colors are going to be, how he goes about choosing that. Um, it would be interesting to know, like, does he look at his whole color chart as a whole 
or does he look at the individual sets? Because I think looking at the color chart as a whole definitely goes a long way. I will say this most recent set that he did, the dragon set, I feel like it filled in a lot of gaps. Like for instance, it brought in Dark Knight, Wizard, and Saber. And I feel like those darker colors add a lot to it because before our darkest green that we had was an opal green. And I don't know about you all, but my opal green is pretty short um, along with Fang Green. Forest is there too. But these kind of cooler colored dark greens are really nice. So Wizard and Saber, great addition. Dark Knight's interesting because it's a nice dark one, but it's almost in the gray tones. Um, so it's right up there with Zephyr Blue. I just feel like he did a really good job of choosing the dragon set. Now, would I recommend the dragon set on its own as the first set that you buy of Black Widows? The answer is no, and that's only because by itself it doesn't give you a very huge range. There's not even a white with it, but it fills in the gaps for the whole set really, really, really well. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are going to grab one from every set because first I want to test their water solubleness. So this is the tin that the dragons came in and all of this, I've had mine for a while, so I have long since uh, misplaced my other tins, mostly because I don't keep them in their tins anymore. I keep them in a case. So the dragons I've taken out of here and I've put them in the case now. So we're gonna open this up. Now I've gotten a pretty big size case. I'll have the link for this in the description below, but that is partially because there's still some empty slots in here. There's still some empty slots because uh, rumor has it there are going to be even more sets released. And I'm just like, you know what? I just need one big set for all of this. So we'll turn this around here. Okay, so how I have these organized in here is by the color chart they create, that I created that has all of the colors in it. And you can find all of these charts today uh, over on my website. So if you're looking for a chart that has all 180 organized um, by color, I have that over there, it's all free, so feel free to check that out. Um, so I have them all organized by color, starting with white. I mean, I guess technically the rainbow is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, but for some reason I always start with yellow. It's a thing. <laughs> then we've got all of our reds. We've got pinks and purples, purples leading into blues. Then we've got blues leading into greens, then greens into brown. And then lastly, the browns into blacks and grays. Now you'll notice on here that the pencils are not uniform. Now, the way that he did his pencils grew over time. So unless he had a plan at the beginning to make them all look uniform, although it's mildly annoying that you're distracted by how they look and you can't like immediately like, cause not all of the names are in the same place. So for instance, I mean, we have skin, monarch, black widow, dragon, but if we go to this page, you can see that we've got some scorpions in here. Now the lettering on the pencils um, and the markings do help differentiate. So for instance, um, we've got the dark skin tone set, so it's gonna be coated with SD013. So SD is the kind of code for the dark skin tone set. Obviously we have Monarch, we have Dragon. Um, let's see, that's another dark skin tone set. Uh, okay, so here is where it's different. So you can see here, we've got the Black Widow ones, which are, which are red, they've got red lettering, and it says Black Widow up at the top. But if you look at the Scorpion one over here, you can see that the name Scorpion is actually at the bottom and the name of the color is up here. So there's a little bit of lack of consistency, but again, that's just an aesthetic thing. That has nothing to do with the quality of the pencil. So if that doesn't bother you, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, I have had some people that were kind of put off by the name, by the fact that it was Black Widows, you know, if they've got, you know, fear of bugs by any means. Now, I am I am no lover of bugs. Sorry, bugs, but I'm not a huge fan. Um, but the names of the pencils and the names, you know, cause the Black Widow box does have a large spider in it. That doesn't really bother me, but there is an inconsistency with the labeling. However, Monarchs and Dragons are all consistently labeled um, as far as the color on the bottom and the, so that like there's a difference in color here, which I, I don't mind. I actually really like that. Um, so if he in future sets consistently labels them in this order with the larger color dip, 
and then the color pencil number, and then the name, and then the set, and then of course it's little symbol up here. If he stays consistent with that, that's gonna be, uh, that's gonna be really nice. As a whole though, all 180 of them are really good together. So let's grab um, a color from every set. Let's go to the blue range, cause it's my favorite color. So I thought for a second that I wanted to use watercolor paper, um, but I want to use the regular paper. This is the Nina cardstock. I'll have a link for it in the description below. This is the paper that I usually print my coloring pages on. So um, I wanted to I wanted to use the regular paper uh, so that we get a true idea of whether or not these are water soluble. So we're gonna grab a pen so we can label these. Now you'll have to forget my hand, forgive my handwriting because my fingers are still a little stiff so it makes it a little hard to hold uh, writing implements here. So first up we have Pleasant Blue. I'm pressing pretty hard on the paper here. Okay, so this is from the Dragon set. Again, excuse my handwriting until <laughs> my fingers are better. It's going to be a little wonky. All right, and this is the Pleasant Blue. Okay. Then we're going to use Forget Me Not. And actually, I'm going to write over a little bit so we have some room to kind of drag the pigment if we need to. And this is from the Black Widow set. Okay. So now what we have is I have an Arteza water brush here and what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and add water to all of these and just see, see just how water soluble they are. Okay. Got my little cloth here. Okay. So this is Pleasant Blue from the Dragon set. A little bit, but not too bad. You know what we need to do? We need to pull out some of our other wax pencils because it'd be unfair to compare them to oil pencils because those are completely different. But we will compare them to uh, to other wax pencils. But honestly, that didn't bleed all that much. I'm, I'm pleased with that. Let's check the Black Widows. Okay, that one has a fair amount of pigment. Okay, Blue Heaven. Let's get a little bit more water here. There we go. Okay. Blue Heaven from Scorpion said. That one's not too bad. Now why, now you, you may be asking like, why does it matter if they're water soluble now? And part of that is, is because some people like to mix um, watercolors and regular pencils. So imagine you're doing a part with regular pencils and watercolors and you go to activate your watercolor pencils and your regular pencils also activate. That can really mess up what you're trying to do with your picture. Okay, so now this is the Monarch set. And it's very possible that some colors react more than others. For the Monarch set, that's pretty reactive. Okay, let's try Aquarius from the Cobra set. That one's pretty reactive too. Okay, then we have Pretty Pink. A little bit, but not too bad. Okay, and then Cinnamon. Fairly reactive. So I really think that part of this has to do with which pigments you're using. You can see kind of as a whole, it's why I tried to choose some of the similar ones to give us a good idea, but I'd say with the dragon ones, they're pretty improved. Let's grab a different color real quick, just to see if it has anything to do with, okay, here's a red from the dragon set, a red from the dragon set. This is Bloodshot, this one here, okay from the dragon set. Okay, and let's just see if that does anything. Okay, so fairly reactive. But like I said, in all fairness, I think we need to grab a, another wax-based pencil of somewhat equal uh, quality and kind of see if it's, if we're being unfair to it, essentially. So let's, let's grab another wax-based pencil and just see how reactive that is.
Okay, so I've grabbed two. One is the Prismacolor True Blue, fairly pigmented pencil. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and give this a shot. Okay. So I would say the Prismacolor is no more reactive than the, than the uh, Black Widow. I don't know. The fact that they're moving pigment around, I don't, I don't know. Let's, let's try. So Mark Arts are a budget color pencil for sure. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. This one is number 35, but it's just another blue one. Not too much, not too much. Let's grab an actual watercolor pencil now so you can see the difference. Okay. So what I have grabbed are the Al Richter watercolor pencils, which are a high quality watercolor pencil. And then these are also expert watercolor pencils, but as far as um, quality range, I would consider not necessarily budget, but they are more affordable than something like the Faber-Castells. So these are the Arteza watercolors. Let's grab same in the range of blues that we were using before. So this one, she's a nice dark blue so that we can get plenty of pigment. Okay, so this is the Arteza watercolor and the Albrecht Durr. This is, what color? This is Thalo Blue. Okay, so we're going to use the Arteza first. Okay, so this is the Mykonos Blue. And I will say the feel of like watercolor pencils are definitely different, like these are, these are smooth. All right, and Thalo Blue, and the only reason we're doing this is to give these ones a fair shake in the sense that um, what's the difference between how water soluble those are versus how a watercolor color pencil actually works. So these ones are actual watercolor pencils, so we're gonna add water to these in comparison to see how they work versus how they should work if they were watercolor. Okay, so Arteza, ooh, too much water, too much water. I wanna be fair. Now this little bit here you're seeing, it's because the paper is pilling. This is not watercolor paper. This is, this is cardstock. <laughs> okay, now the favorite castell. <laughs> it's really smooth. <laughs> Sorry, I was marveling at that really quick. Okay, so here are my final thoughts on, on, this, on this portion of, of the video. In terms of water solubleness of Black Widows. Um, so they do have some level of water solubleness, but as you can see, in comparison to the Prismacolor and the Mark Arts, which also have a certain level of pigment movement that comes when you add water on top, I wouldn't say it's super different. I would say the most water soluble out of all of the sets seem to be, now we only tried one pencil, and you have to understand that some pigments may spread more easily than others. So to do a full test on it, and this, this whole video isn't about water solubleness of pencils. If we were, we would do a full test on like all the colors, but this is just to get a basic idea. But just from this one test, I would say the most water soluble seems to be the Monarchs based on the one color that we choose. Next would be the Cobra, and then maybe the dark skin tones. That being said, None of this is going to matter anything if you aren't adding any water to your page whatsoever. So, you know, anything where you find, you know, pros and cons versus pencils, figure out how it works for you and whether or not that is relevant to you. I will say based on, based on this blue one here, now it's a pretty light blue, but it does seem it improves. I would be really curious to know the exact formula of these just to see what the difference is. You can see here, for instance, the scorpion one didn't really spread much at all. So short of the different colors, the pigment, if each of these pencil pencils are supposedly from the same mix for their lead, it raises the question, what is different in the formula that makes some pencils more water soluble than others? Is it just the pigment or is there truly something different? I would be very curious to know. But if you're looking in comparison to a true watercolor pencil, they're not fully water soluble, which is understandable because they're not meant to be water soluble. But that has been kind of a big question as of late. They are water soluble to agree to a degree, but not for this. So if you're not planning on adding any water to your page or mixing mediums, I wouldn't worry about it too much. The pencils themselves are really great, which is what we're gonna get into now. Before this video gets too long, let's do a little bit of blending and just some colors that kind of go well together, okay? 
Okay, so I've chosen a small selection of colors here. We're gonna do a couple of blends. We're gonna do some, use some of the, uh, the skin tone colors. So we're gonna do like some darker, just a small easy blend on here so you can see how they blend together. Um, we've got a leaf here. So we're gonna do a collection of greens. And then we have got blue, purple, and um, kind of a reddish and an orange that we're gonna do on this cube. Now these were just quick drawn with a uh, Stedler pigment liner here. <laughs> Excuse the shaky lines again. My, my fingers here tend to uh, make it a little bit more difficult, but we're gonna make it work. We're gonna make it work. So let's go ahead and dive in. Let's do the leaf first. Okay, so for the leaf, I chose three colors. I chose turquoise from the Scorpion set. I chose toxic green from the Black Widow set. And I chose pine from the Dragon set. So we are going to start with turquoise. Okay, and I just, I usually start and go from darkest to lightest. Um, there are some artistic rules that say maybe you shouldn't do that, um, but I do whatever feels most natural to me. And if you've been around here for a little while, I tend to go sort of all over the place. So, um, yeah. <laughs> All right, so there's our little bit of turquoise. Now, if we were getting real fancy with this, we could grab some reds, mix in that with here, but we're just doing kind of basic colors here. So that was the turquoise. Now we're gonna grab the toxic green. Okay, and I'm just going lightly. And as you can see, we're not using a blender or anything, but they all work really well together. Despite my suspicions that maybe the formulas aren't exactly the same, I don't know. I don't know. I have a hard time understanding why some of the pencils feel differently than the others if the formula is all the same. But either way, they all work really well together. So I suppose in the long run, it doesn't really matter. So now we're gonna do pine, and this is from the dragon set. Like I said, I know there's a lot of videos out there right now, everybody reviewing the dragon set, but this is definitely a video about the the Black Widow pencils pencils as a whole, as as an entire set versus versus just the one. All right, let's grab turquoise again. We're gonna go a little bit darker. I apologize, I'm going out of the lines. My hand's a little flinchy. When I am completely healed, I sh should at least be able to attempt to have a bit more control over my pencil. All right, now we're gonna grab the toxic green. Okay, and then pine. Okay, and that's just a nice, easy, easy leaf blend. All right, let's move on over to the cube, shall we? So let's see, we're gonna move these ones out of the way and let's start with, let's start with purple. For the purple side, I chose eggplant from the Monarch set and tulip from the Cobra set. We're just gonna use two colors, okay? So on one corner here, we're gonna create a gradient from the darkest to the lightest pressed a little bit heavier on the corner and I'm lighter as I'm going out. Okay, now let's go ahead and grab Tulip. So harder in the corner and then lighter as I go out. The key to creating a good blend without using any solutions or blenders or anything is making sure that as you blend the colors into one another, you layer them on top of each other and you don't have any harsh lines. You wanna make sure that you use in light layers where you can. Now, you can go back and forth between your two colors to even it out even more, but I think for the sake of today, we will go ahead and leave it as is. And see, like you could add a little bit darker up there. Yeah, actually, no, that bothers me. I really want to. <laughs> I want to add a little bit up here. And please do not hold your pencil how I'm holding it. I am only holding this, well, because of my fingers, but uh, long, long term, this is not super comfortable. <laughs> okay, so those are the purple. Let's go ahead and do the blue, shall we? So for the other side, I grabbed Blue Daisy from the Monarch set and denim from the Monarch set. Okay. So we're gonna start with Blue Daisy. Okay. And then denim. 
Okay, nice and simple blend. When you first start practicing your blends, don't choose anything too different. Don't try and blend like a dark purple with a bright pink right away. Start with something a little bit closer uh, to their color family and it'll make your practice a lot easier. So we're gonna start with Dragon Breath. This is Dragon Breath from the Dragon Set and Sunset from the Cobra Set. And then Sunset. Excuse my going out of the lines today. Okay, there we go. And there's our little cube. Like I said, you can add more layers, you could burnish it, you could blend it, whatever you wanna do, but this is just kinda of show you kinda of basic blending with the Black Widows. All right, so now let's do our little circle here, and this could be a representation as if you were gonna do skin tone. Um, so we're gonna start with, we have Dark Chocolate from the Scorpion set, we have Cinnamon from the Dark Skin Tone set, we have Foxy Brown from the Black Widow set, and we have Rust from the Light Tone set. And this is just a small circle, so we'll use a little bit of each, but we're gonna start with Dark Chocolate. See, it's interesting, as I'm using this, Dark Chocolate itself feels feels a little bit drier than the other pencils, if, if that makes sense. Not, not grittier if there's more texture, it just doesn't feel as smooth on the paper. I don't know, I think it just makes me wish I knew more about the color pencil making process and what exactly goes into their formulas to understand why some pencils feel different than others. All right, now we're gonna use cinnamon. Okay, and we're gonna go on top of the dark chocolate and then lightly fade out. I'm gonna kind of bring it up along the sides a little bit. Okay, nice light edges, ready for the next color. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab Foxy Brown. Again, we're gonna go on the other two colors here. And we're gonna slowly start bringing it out. We're gonna bring this Foxy Brown fully around the circle top of the other ones. Bring it out just a bit more. We're gonna leave this middle place here for our lightest color. And again, you could do a second layer on this, bring more of the shadow around if you like. Okay, and then we're gonna grab Rust. Again, go over the other colors. All right. All right, now just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and do another layer real quick. And there we go. There are our little blend examples of colors. Um, so like I said, you can use a blender on top of these. You can use whatever blender pen. Um, they take to it really well. Um, so this was just sort of to kind of give you an idea of what you get in the whole set of the 180s, their individual benefits. Um, like I said, if you were going to choose only one set to get to start out with, to try them out, I would highly recommend the Black Widow set. It's the first set and it's a really good set that has a full range of, of colors. And then adding in the other sets, the, uh, the light and dark tone sets are really good. But honestly, you put them all together and you've got, you've got a lot of really good colors for all of them. And like I said, uh, this chart and the full 180 chart will be available on my website. Um, so you can take a look at that there. I'll have all the links in the description below for every single pencil set, the case, uh, what else did we use? The water brush, the pigment liner, all of that will be there. Um, so if you have any questions, comments, if you have a favorite uh, Black Widow set, please let me know if you have, well, any other opinions about Black Widows you'd like to share, please, please, uh, Put them down in the comments below. Um, but aside from that, as a whole, I love the Black Widows. I think they're a great range. Um, sometimes I get a little overwhelmed by the 180, but still, it's really, really good. It's got a lot of really nice purples, which a lot of sets really lack. So in my personal opinion, were you to invest in the full, uh, in, in all of the sets up to 180, I don't think you would be disappointed. But if you only wanted to get one, then I would say, like I said, the Black Widow set. 
Um, but that is everything I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any other questions, comments, you know, put, put them down below. Um, but aside from that, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Bye.